All right, we're going to do a bit of an unboxing of the Acom Data Mini Pal, which is a form factor external hard drive, Firewire USB drive for the Mac Mini. And if you've seen my older Mac Mini Media Center videos, you'd have seen this as part of the stack on there. Now, I purchased another one because they went on sale. So I got this, and an older one of mine had the hard drive had gone bad. But in the next part of this vid, I'll show you how you can replace the hard drive in case your hard drive does go bad within the unit. So let's go ahead and do the unboxing. This is a 320 gig. These are PETA IDE hard drives inside. I only know that because I replaced the hard drive with my other one. It does USB 2, FireWire, can connect to Windows and Macintosh alike. But again, there are many other external hard drive products. This is predominantly targeting, targeting the Mac Mini as it is the exact same form factor. This little tray comes out. Inside you have the USB cable, the FireWire cable. You have your power cords and instruction manual along with some screws here. Underneath all that is the actual drive. And that's it. Let's see film move here. There it is. This is your LED indicator light. Nice aluminum finish around it. In the back, you have your power button. This is your power source, USB. This one is the main USB that connects to your computer, and you have three FireWire, and you can daisy chain quite a lot of these together if you wish. So that is the unboxing of the Acom Data Mini Pal. All right. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to take this thing apart so you can swap out that hard drive in case the hard drive goes bad. All right, so when I took this thing apart originally, I attempted just pulling off this top piece, which is just held on by glue. Taking this off is not enough, though. So really, it's just best to take this whole unit along with the top off. However, it can be quite cumbersome to take this top off because there's little latches in here. One right here and here inside here and they're little they're little loops of plastic that you can stick your screwdriver in and you pull it and then you can push the the side of the unit off and you do this for each one of them so let's remove it after loosening up all those ties this is what it looks like get a better angle for you. You see how it's got a little catch there? So by pushing it back it releases the lid. Alright. They use a Western Digital hard drive. It is not SATA. It is PETA IDE. So I have not tried to see if any adapters would work. I don't think it would. It's this really tight form factor here. So uh, you're going to be stuck just dealing with a PADA IDE type hard drive if you need to replace this. And this is the bad hard drive. But there's two screws. There's one right there. And there's another one right here. So I'm using a number zero Phillips. Just unscrew it. You can see here is like the power supply for the hard drive and then here's the actual interface. Now, the way that this motherboard comes up because you can't get this hard drive off without lifting this whole motherboard unit off. So, if you notice right here, there's some little slat right here that holds the motherboard in. If you can see it right there, the motherboard kind of slides into that. The way I do that is I kind of pull this and then lift up right here and then pull out that way. Now, you're still connected 
via, via this little unit right here. You can keep that on if you want or you can pull it off, it doesn't matter. You can just simply flip it over and you'll be shown here. Get a better angle here. Three screws. One, two, three. I'll unscrew those. All right, so now the hard drive is loose. You can just simply pull it off of the interface right here and work the power off. And that's it. I want to make a couple of notes that if you, going back to this top unit, if you pry this open, you'll have a heat shield here that may come apart. You'll also have a little plastic, uh, it's like a little plastic cover for the whole LED indicator lights. You just might want to keep track of those if you do pull it off and this assembly comes apart. It's no big deal. There's little slats that you can simply slide these things over each other and re-glue it and take care of that piece right there. All right, you can see all the units here. I'm about ready to assemble them all, stack them. Anyway, you see the Mac Mini in the back. Right next to it is a Maglia TV tuner that you can use for satellite and other kinds of inputs that acts as a PVR for your Mac Mini and then of course the two Acom data external hard drives so I'm gonna go ahead and stack them before I do kind of explain how it works you need to plug in one firewire and the USB into your computer into the back of your Acom data hard drive for it to work. If you really wanted to put the hard drive on any surface, just note that it has a nice rubber finish here and it's not going to scratch or scuff anything. You should know that this front part is a push button backup. So if you do push it, it'll do the whole software package that you can read about within the Mini Pals manual. I do not use that. I, of course, use this, as I've stated before, as an external drive to store my recorded movies and TV shows on. Okay, go to Disk Utility. You're going to select the hard drive because you want to format this to HFS. It's already in FAT32. If you're on a Windows machine, you can format it to whatever file system you prefer. But we'll go to go ahead and hit click Erase, and I'm going to go ahead and change it to. And you can title it. And it'll go to town and you'll actually see the LED change. You can see now it's formatting. And that's all there is to it. Now you'll see that it is complete. And again, Time Machine asks, and I don't want, uh, of course, I don't want it to, to be. And that's really it. So I'm going to go ahead and install the other external hard drive. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.